the two words that jump into Fijian words that jump into my mind is uh, Virokovi, which is respect, and Vindokai, which is integrity. It was an honor and privilege to meet with Mr. Calvesi, and this is what he had to say about kindness and managing the Fiji rugby team. Rupake, thank you so much for the opportunity to interview you. <laughs> You're most welcome, man. Oh, so, um, the main reason why we've travelled all the way to come meet you is, uh, in our opinion, you are a superhero of Fiji rugby. Like, you have gone well beyond the call of duty. And, uh, like, in our opinion, if it wasn't for you, Fiji would not have got that uh, gold medal. <laughs> hey, the superhero of the boys. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the role I, the role as a manager, anyone can do it. And I'm just part of the, the cog in the, mm -hmm. in the machinery to get this through. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pretty happy where we've ended, but at the same time grateful that being part of it has made mm -hmm. history. Like, oh. One of the main things which Ben Ryan has said that he com totally misses about Fiji is you. <laughs> he said, uh, yeah, he has actually said that uh, of everyone and everything, I miss Ropate. Yeah. And uh, what he also said was uh, whenever he meets people overseas, yeah. one of the first things they ask him is, how's Ropate? It's yeah. not like, how are you? How's yeah. Ropate? <laughs> yeah. so, can you, like, you know, explain how important friendships are in rugby? <laughs> Friendship is, uh, is, is so important, not only in rugby, but in life mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many people that we meet along the way mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's how we reflect and bounce off each other um, mm -hmm. really says a lot of how we can then work together, mm -hmm. especially uh, in such a high pressure environment and not only that but keeping the glue together despite all that's happening around us. Okay. Um, friendship, friendship is about love, uh, respect mm -hmm. and showing integrity mm -hmm. and for me those are the three major things that we have to have and you know mm -hmm. The two words that jump into Fijian words that jump into my mind is uh, Virokovi, which is respect, and Vindokai, which is integrity. And you know, as, as Fijians, these, those are the two main, two main words that we've been taught growing up, yeah. <laughs> to be respectful mm -hmm. and to have integrity in life. Because without those two, you know, there's nothing else. And these are things that translate into results on the field, in your opinion? <laughs> it does. Yeah. It does. Uh, you know, with with Ben and as a management team, we, we had to, what can I say, we had to keep our, you know, we had to keep simple rules and learn of each other because we, we, when we have a strong management team and we have integrity among the team, that filters down to the boys who then to them, they have their belief in us, and they're willing to, you know, they, they know that where we're going to and what we're trying to achieve, mm -hmm. it's all under one big umbrella that covers all of us. Oh, that is absolutely awesome. Like, Ben Ryan had an interview, um, I think it was late last year or early this year, yeah. which I've got written here, and so what the reporter asked him yeah. was, hey, Ben Ryan, what is the one thing you can tell us yeah. that summarizes what is most important yeah. in getting the gold medal? Yeah. And so what he actually said was, uh, I've got it written here. He said, keep kindness and all the things around that and mindfulness at the very top of the agenda. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one thing that a lot of people have said is you've been very kind to others. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as in, uh, like when the Fiji team had to fly somewhere, you went and got to know the airline staff, you went and got to know the hotel people. Like, yeah. 
and all that made a big difference. Can, can you elaborate on that? Um, <laughs> you know, what, one thing, uh, there's a lot of things running through my mind, but one, <laughs> one thing for me is, is being nice to everyone that I meet. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when when things do happen, when you know when you're falling down, mm -hmm. they'll be there to catch you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the same thing I apply wherever I do my work yeah. or whatever I feel it, wherever I feel it myself to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And kindness is one one of the biggest things for me is that traveling with the team through mm -hmm. airports, through uh, through different countries. Mm -hmm. and hotels and the change of pace mm -hmm. everyone that I meet I hand them a Fiji a Fiji t-shirt or yes. Fiji polo shirt or mm -hmm. Fiji jersey to say thank you yes. mm -hmm. for your support for your help because yes. mm -hmm. uh, most times the boys are tired yes. and these guys you know they, they've got a big crew to to push through yes. mm -hmm. so with their help I hand this over to them mm -hmm. to say thanks and in return, when I come through there again, mm -hmm. they're smiling, welcome, you know, having the welcome smile, and the transit, the, mm -hmm. the flights, is easy. You know, they they're there to help. And same as the hotels, there's extra things that we put in the boys' room mm -hmm. for every little bit, uh, the cleaners that come through. The boys are being taught to be nice to them as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, we for that. Uh, one classic example, one of the, the workers cleaning the rooms in, uh, at Rio Olympics. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to partake of any food mm -hmm. that's provided in the Olympic Village. Yes. Mm -hmm. The players would go to McDonald's, which is free, mm -hmm. and get McDonald's from there, mm -hmm. and leave them in the room. When the cleaners come to clean, yes. they'll eat first before they clean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simple things, and even going through hotels mm -hmm. when we stayed in Japan. Yes. The the Japanese, and like our friends, are very respectful. Yes. Mm -hmm. They'll bow their heads yes. to the players. Yep. The players would stop and bow as well, mm -hmm. but then the cleaner would bow again, you know, and our players would bow as well. So <laughs> it's it's little things that yes. mm -hmm. we've been taught as mm -hmm. as kids, mm -hmm. and we try to bring that up and try and maintain that where we travel. Mm -hmm. But it starts from management. It starts from management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. awesome. the, the one thing that I'm trying to understand and I don't think I have really gotten is the concept of humility. Like yep. Fiji and rugby players are always talking about humility. And I tried to do some research into what humility means, like yep. you know, the Greek and... Yep. Uh, it's a virtue or a value that one would not normally associate with a contact sport. Like, can you explain? Classic, like, classic example. Yeah. My first trip to it was Dubai or mm -hmm. one of the Cape Town, mm -hmm. and we were in the same changing room as Russia. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we came into the changing room, mm -hmm. Russia had this big stereo. Mm -hmm. And was head banging music, mm -hmm. uh, heavy metal, mm -hmm. and here they were all changed in their jerseys ready to run out. Mm -hmm. Just walking around with, you know, that boom, boom music, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. going really fast and heavy. Mm -hmm. And they walked out mm -hmm. to play their game. Yeah. And then before they went out, one of the boys asked me to ask the manager if we can use their stereo. Mm -hmm. I said, so I went over and asked their manager, and the manager said, yes. So, boys Bluetooth their music, mm -hmm. and because it was a Sunday, mm -hmm. had church music going. The Russians came off the field, mm -hmm. they lost their game, mm -hmm. walked into the room, and they had church music going. Mm -hmm. and so they just sat down quietly while their manager talked to them, mm -hmm. the boys got changed. Mm -hmm. And then, before we ran out, we took the church music off, mm -hmm. onto the field. Mm -hmm. We won our game, came back on, mm -hmm. and the boys were sitting quietly, mm -hmm. Music wasn't on, mm -hmm. sitting in the corner, all just changing mm -hmm. while Ben was talking. Mm -hmm. The manager came over to me and said, mm -hmm. Rob, mm -hmm. 
Russia, Fiji, different. Mm -hmm. We play music, bang, bang, bang. Mm -hmm. We go play. Mm -hmm. We come back. We come back, we hear Fiji music, mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. You go play, mm -hmm. oh, play wild, <laughs> play tough. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Question was, why? Mm -hmm. you know, for me, I, I just couldn't answer that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just said to him, look, it's just the way we were brought up. Mm -hmm. It's just being humble. Mm -hmm. And today in Fiji is the church day. Mm -hmm. We tune ourselves to what we grew up with yes. on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. But we know that we have a job to do mm -hmm. on the field. Mm -hmm. So when we walk out of here, yes. our mindset changes. Mm -hmm. We switch mm -hmm. to a fighting mode so that we can go out and play, play our hearts out. Sure. Reason being is that back in Fiji, we've got a whole country watching. So we're not only playing for ourselves, mm -hmm. we're playing for people who are watching through the television. Also, they looked at me anyway. I understand. So that, uh, I, I'm mindful that uh, we don't have much time and you've got to go. No worries. <laughs> Next, so I've got uh, another two questions. <laughs> like, you can do five. I'm, I'm unsure if you're aware of this concept called the tall poppy syndrome. Yeah. Like, you know, in New Zealand and yeah. Australia we have where, yeah. like, you know, you plant a field full of whatever, like, you know, poppies. Yeah. And you always have one or two poppies that have grown really tall. Yeah. And especially in Australia and New Zealand, we have got the, the habit of whenever we see a tall poppy, we try to pull it down. Yeah. And Sometimes I feel that the Fiji rugby players, yeah. the ones that really distinguish themselves, yeah. there's a little bit of tall poppy syndrome going on, as in mm -hmm. the public sometimes tries to pull them down. And mm -hmm. like, you know, Serevi may be one example of yeah. that, as in because he's distinguished himself so much, yeah. he's done so much, people tend to criticize him yeah. just because. Yeah. <laughs> right of opinion or something. Yeah. Do, do you think that might be the case? There is, a, there is always a case when you're doing something good. Yeah. There's always something. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's, uh, in Ephesians it says, mm -hmm. or, with all the good that you do, there's always an enemy yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, and that's I guess this one thing with uh, just being Fijian is that you don't like to see people succeed so well and then, you know, you talk about them to the point that it's going to bring them down. But I know with most of our players, yes. um, Especially the ones that came through sevens during our period of we've gone on to succeed it. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, they were humble in the way they were close. Yeah. The the things that they want to do. Yeah. You know, classic example is Osea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah, the the way you know where he is now in the US yeah. taking his family across. Yes. Yeah. And another one is Chasa, yeah. mm -hmm. that they've gone across now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just the humility in them to do things, do things right, yeah. mm -hmm. but at the same time keep their feet grounded in yeah. all that they do. Yeah. But there's always be people around to, to beg and drag. But that's part of the sport. <laughs> it's part of the sport. Mm -hmm. And it's, I guess it's part of life, mm -hmm. but it's how you weather the storm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's how you weather the storm and carry on. Mm -hmm. It's basically focusing on what you need to do yeah. mm -hmm. and knowing that the people around you are on the same focus as you, especially when you have family. Mm -hmm. And it's all who you care about. Because at the end of the day, no one else yeah. mm -hmm. can carry that bucket yeah. and it's paid for you. Yeah. For you.
to- totally get what you're saying. Like uh, the next, like what appears to me, yeah. like uh, looking at the New Zealand con- context, yeah. like you know when the All Blacks lose, yeah. people tend to consolidate around the All Blacks, as yeah. in the media. Mm-hmm. You don't have that much. Hey, let's fire the coach. Let's look for new players. All that yeah. sort of thing. Whereas in Fiji, like even recently, yeah, like you know, we have a lot of negative yeah. coverage. Yeah. So the, the the big question is, like you know, what is the role of the media mm-hmm. in sevens or in yeah. rugby in general in Fiji? And do you think things can be done better? <laughs> I'm not sure it can be done better now with uh, the power of social media as well. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of keyboard warriors, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, keyboard coaches, mm-hmm. yeah, keyboard players. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, f- the, the fact is, you know, at the end of the day, it's the coach and the players on the ground that matters yeah. mm-hmm. most of all. You know, I've, I've encountered during my time a few mm-hmm. and even things that I've seen yeah. in the papers have been taken out of context. Out of context, you know, mm-hmm. and I've been slammed personally mm-hmm. and my family. But you know, I find that when I reply to those, it just becomes it goes back and forth. But then I had to learn to grow a thicker skin. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And just be mindful that mm-hmm. it's not about anyone else, but it's all about the team. And the players that are in front of me, I'm accountable to them, yeah. mm-hmm. not to anyone else. Because at the end of the day, these are the players, these are the players, mm-hmm. the people that be on the field mm-hmm. wearing their jersey, their rugby boots getting hurt, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, getting injured, mm-hmm. and playing their hearts out for the nation. So I'm accountable to them. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's the, it's from a management point of view. I've got to keep a good relationship with the media as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the mainstream media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because through them, yeah. mm-hmm. we can then do, get good reporting on the players yeah. mm-hmm. and what we're trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. Like, the next question regarding, like, you know, things from a management point of view. Yeah. It's a constant struggle with all tier two nations Mm -hmm. in terms of resources, in terms of money. Do you reckon like, you know, when you were manager of Fiji, Mm -hmm. what were some of the struggles? Uh, Like, were you... Please, you can elaborate on that. (laughs) When we first Mm -hmm. went to Dubai, Mm -hmm. it was just uh, Ben Ryan, William Kung and I, yeah. 2013, mm-hmm. and what we had in the changing room mm-hmm. was just um, was just a nutritional drink yeah. and the nutritional powder. And I walked past New Zealand's changing room yeah. and just had a glass, mm-hmm. and they had all sorts of stuff on their table. Mm-hmm. And we only had about three, three of these things on our table. And the funds being taken across was just enough to buy what we needed in foods. Yeah. Where all these other developed nations yeah. come in with you know, four or five ma- management team, yeah. and even six, and yeah. all had everything needed. But yeah. so then you fast forward to Olympics yep. 2016. Yep. Mm-hmm. Our changing room is the same as everyone else, yeah. mm-hmm. as the world developed team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, for me, for what Ben Ryan did, bringing his knowledge and, you know, and the, his, yeah, the things that he learned through sports science into the side. And the funding that came through, which he pushed to, with help from the government, yeah. but most of all was the help from the people mm-hmm. through the 
the GoFundMe yeah. through the other various uh, the UK Eighth Man UK Eighth Man yeah. and the US uh, oh, South yeah. South Bend of Wood yeah, yeah. yeah. South Bend we played a major part yeah. in getting equipment for us yeah. and training equipment and even to the extent of gym equipment yeah. that we were able to use mm -hmm. part of the build up to to the Olympics. But this just shows the power of the people. Yeah. You know, when you get things right from your management point, yeah. mm -hmm. you get the teams right. Mm -hmm. Robert, like, uh, just so I can understand and maybe yeah. the, the viewers, so let's say when a team goes overseas, yeah. does World Rugby pay for airfares and um, like, so yeah. the, these additional expenses? The, the uh, airfares and uh, airfares, accommodation, transportation is paid by World Rugby and also the country that's hosting. Okay. Yeah. But like uh, tier one nations might decide to go a week early or something and they take care of it or how does it work? Uh, they can take the flights, yeah. but uh, the accommodation mm -hmm. is by the, by the team itself okay. until the period of until the period of coming into camp. Eh? Okay. So like we used to do in going to Dubai early yeah. mm -hmm. with Ben, yeah. we were we were fly in paid by World Rugby, yeah. but then we stayed in Abu Dhabi yeah. and that was paid for by Abu Dhabi yeah. Hall Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we trained in their facility, yeah. eat at their facility until time to get coming to Dubai, then we travel in. So just to get a uh, yeah, acclimatized to the and, and so this was all because of kindness and yes. asking nicely and yeah. yeah yeah yeah. So a lot of those were were done out of kindness, and even there's a physiotherapist in in London, yes. one of the top physiotherapists in London, John. Mm -hmm. um, you might see him on the sideline in London during London Sevens. Yeah. The week. To the tournament, he gives his free service, you know, chiropractic to to the players, and even there on the sideline as well. When other boys need correcting, he helps out. Yeah.